So I'm running a little bit late for a meeting this morning. And then uh, I have a couple phone calls and then we'll be back in the office all day. We've been sick and everybody seems to be getting somewhat back to normal. I don't think I could have taken much more. Josie did a great job of just keeping the wheels on the bus and somehow she's the only one who managed not to get sick. Today's discussion doesn't come out of any business that I visited. It doesn't come out of any anything I saw or experienced today that I thought, oh, this is a great business insight. This actually is something I've wanted to do for a while. And I learned this, or I saw this illustrated. Actually, I learned it somewhere else, but I've seen it illustrated uh, from my eight-year-old and my 10-year-old boys. So their mother got them these clear uh, banks. These are just clear jars, and this is where they put their money. And Josie did a great thing with them. She set them up with these three jars and she said, okay, you're going to have a savings, or I'm sorry, a savings jar, a giving jar, and a spending jar, all right? So each week you get $5 in your allowance and you need to put $1 in the giving jar, $1 in the savings jar, and you can spend the other three. An interesting thing happens when you do this. When it comes time to go to the store and buy a toy, or go on Amazon and pick something out that they want. There's never any haggling back and forth with mom and dad about how much we're going to spend versus how much they're going to spend because what they're going to spend is in the spending jar. If they want to spend more than that, then they have to wait a few weeks until they can accumulate the money. When it comes time to go to the bank and put money in their savings account, there's never any haggling over how much in the piggy bank they have to take out and put in the savings account or where that money is going to come from because it's already in the savings jar. They just pull out, pull out whatever is in here and that goes to the bank to make the deposit. And when it comes time to help a family in need or to put money in the church offering plate or to support a charity that they, they want to support, there's never any angst over what they're going to be giving up to do that you know, out of their spending money because it's already in the giving jar and that's what it's there for. How does this apply to business? I see business owners this time of year making some really questionable, some would say stupid decisions about running their business simply because they're worried about the amount of money they're going to have to pay in taxes. Now the tax code doesn't change that often. It changes, but it doesn't change in the middle of the year. The fact is these businesses have known what percentage of their profits are going to be have to give it over to, to the government and taxes. They've known that since the year started. The problem is they haven't done anything to set that money aside in a tax jar, in a separate account where the money's available to them. And the thing about spending money in order to lower your tax bill is that you don't pay taxes at a 100% rate. So it's not like if I'm gonna owe $100 in taxes, I can just go out and spend $100 and then not have to give the money to Uncle Sam. The truth is, if I owe $100 in taxes, I might have to spend $500 just to get my tax bill down from 100 to zero. So not only am I spending money that I might not have spent otherwise, I'm spending $400 more than I would if I just paid the tax bill in the first place. One of the things I think business owners should really look at is setting up a savings account so that during the year they can deposit a portion of their monthly or quarterly profits into that account. And when it comes time to pay your tax bill, there's no angst, there's no worry, there's no aggravation over it because the money is already set aside. The clients that we do this with, when they get to the end of the year, usually the amount that they've set aside is more than the amount they're going to owe in taxes. And so they might have $100,000 sitting in that tax savings account and they only need 80000 of it to pay their taxes. Well, now they're happy about paying an $80,000 tax bill because they get $20,000 of that money back that they don't have to give to Uncle Sam. 
They'd already saved it, but now they don't need it. And now it's theirs to do what they want to with. The same thing goes for reinvesting money in your business, setting aside money for that next new hire, all the things that business owners usually wring their hands about. And it's because when they make the money, they put it all into one big jar called mine. And when the jar is mine, there's all kinds of angst about taking it out of that jar because it's not yours anymore. The best thing to do is before you put it into any jar, set up the ones that you know you're going to need, divide it up among them, and then when the time comes to pay it to the tax man or to give it to charity or to invest it back into the business, the money's there. That's what it's for. And there's no emotion behind it. There's no stupid spending. There's no irrational decision making. And people don't get bummed up, bummed out about having a really good year. That's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.